So I'm Felix. I'm one of the founders and co-CEOs of Instant Impact. We are a talent solutions business and we work with small and medium-sized companies uh, really all over the world to help them solve their, their talent challenges. We set the business up in 2010 and, well, as you'll remember, we were coming out of a pretty sticky recession, or we were just coming out of university ourselves and looking at a talent market was pretty difficult to get a first first job in. Our first iteration of business was matching our friends who were recent graduates with um, with fast growth, scale up and, and startup businesses. And that's where our sort of love of, of small smaller businesses came from. Risk taking is really important when, when running a business. And I think one of the defining features of the business landscape right now is that it's in a, a state of continual flux. So if you look at the last four years, we've been through really sort of in, in any other time would be decade defining moments. So you've seen the impact of COVID, seen the impact of the war in Ukraine. And you've seen, of course, the brilliantly timed mini budget, um, that was sarcasm. Uh, but all of all of those things were massive shocks to the uh, to the economy, and we're really expecting that frequency of, of of economy shock to be the norm going forward. So, without being a risk taking business, those changes will happen to you and and businesses that we're expecting to see succeed. And we see this with some of our um, with a, with a lot of our clients. They're really risk taking. They're willing to make risky decisions. You know, they and we are taking market share because of because of our agility and because of our appetite for risk. One of the things that I've really I've been really lucky in my business career so far is I've been amazed by the lengths that my friends, business networks, sort of broader broader personal networks will go to to help out. And I think that it's a massively undertapped resource that that everyone has. And I think it's a very British thing, not asking for help. And I found that 80% of the great ideas I get for free over, over lunch or over a coffee or over a, a beer. And I found that most people, if you ask them to do you a favor, will be thrilled to be able to help out. To continue learning and continue improving throughout your career, I, I'd say there are some really key sources of information. First of all, the books that you read and the thought leadership that you that you ingest. So whether that's a, a, a blog of a, a thought leader that you really respect, whether it's a book written about uh, written about business, there's almost nothing that we've done at Instant Impact that someone else, or that we want to do, that someone else isn't an absolute expert in. So our mantra and my mantra is, well, better to read the book, understand how it's worked from another organization first, and then do five, 10 percent tweaks around the outside to make it work for our organization rather than what we see being done all too often, taking the if it's not built here, it's got no value approach. Um, so there's no real tangible values or something just because you came up with the idea in your organization. Your work life balance is incredibly important, and I think for business leaders and CEOs is a bit is a bit of a, a thorny and challenging subject. I think there's a lot of I think there's an expectation for CEOs to work all hours that God gives um, and to put work above all else. Now, first of all, I'll, I'll start off by saying that I'm incredibly lucky that I've got a co-founder and a and a co-CEO. We we share the role, and that gives us much more flexibility. Uh, to be able to do what is a huge job um, whilst not sacrificing our um, our family. I'm, I've got a young family, I've got a, a two-year-old and a five-month-old, I'm not, not getting a lot of sleep at, at the moment. And for me, knowing that my family comes above everything else and being in a business where I can communicate that to the company and uh, everyone around me will, will respect that, uh, and, and often in most cases feel feel the same way is is really really powerful over over the years i've struggled with mental health nothing nothing as serious as some of those people around me but dealing with dealing with the stress that comes with the job dealing with personal ups and downs alongside work and you know it's a reality of it's a reality of the work life and i think 
fortunately gone are the days where you have to leave your personal problems at the at the door and um, and we can recognize the the tr what the truth is which is that how how we're feeling inside and on a personal level impacts how we perform on a professional level as well so of all of the 12 things that i, I mentioned in the article i think there are three that really stand out as particularly important. Absolute number one on the list is to, is to ask for help. It's something that can be really difficult to do, but being vulnerable enough to continually share how you're feeling and share your own capabilities and capacities um, and limitations with those around you is, is incredibly important. And I think the moment that a business leader becomes a bottleneck to business growth because of their own pride, I think they're in, they're in real trouble. The second is focus. And as an entrepreneurial per person, I find it very easy to get distracted by the latest cool idea, a new company here, a new business idea there. What I've learned through painful experience is it's hard enough to build one really, really great organization and it takes all of your focus in fact it takes, it takes all of my focus and all of my co-ceos focus so i don't know how sole founders do it I think the moment that i find myself veering from the the path of building instant impact into the most impressive talent solutions business the go-to talent solutions business for small and medium sized companies that's where i start to really pull myself back so i think the final learning that's been most impactful on my own business journey has been that that focus on continued learning. One of the core functions of a CEO of an organization is to bring in new vision, new ideas, um, and new ways of working into, into the organization. And, and I found the best source of that is really the, the books that I'm reading, the thought leaders that, that I respect. And then of course, also the, uh, the people around me, the people who've been free with their advice and, and the more formal advisors of the of the organization. It's how you bring that learning back into your organization that's the next key step. And I think what I found is the best way of doing that is to read the book, digest your thoughts, and then and then come to business leadership with transformation and change ideas um, rather than drip feeding uh, principles in. Because uh, if you're really going to be successful with business change, um, you've got to do it in a really thoughtful and structured way.